this might end up like a Benny Hill sketch. But I'm going to tell you the story and draw the front cover for The Emperor's New Clothes. Hello Space Cat matey chums! Stick around for some disgraceful nudity and a Jules version of the Hans Christian Andersen story about vanity. I guess we could all learn a little bit from this story. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. I quite often get questions about the materials that I'm using so I'll tell you that first. I really like using Dela Rowney Aquafine Smooth watercolour paper in the thicker 300 pound weight. The pen I'm using is a Tombow Fudina Suki soft tipped brush pen and the paints I'm using are mostly Winsor & Newton watercolour paint in the artist quality range although I also use Cotman which is also Winsor & Newton and it's their next best quality to the artists. I wouldn't use anything that's really cheap because there will be very little pigment and lots of bulking agent and that will give you a wishy-washy effect and you might think it's your ability giving you that naff finish. It's not, it's the paint. So it's good practice to buy the best quality paint that you can. The Emperor's New Clothes There was an emperor who lived in a kingdom far away called Twittersville. This was because the roofs of the houses were often festooned with twittery birds, all making a lovely noise. The Emperor, his name was Emperor Colin of Twittersville, was someone who spared no expense. He loved his fine wines, fast carriages and horses, and most of all, he loved to buy the most expensive clothing. His pyjamas were made from spider's silk, his cloaks were made from water vole velvet and his socks were spun by silkworms. There really was nothing too good for Emperor Colin. The same, however, could not be said for his people. It was hard work living in Twittersville. The people worked hard every day as they watched the Emperor flouncing around in his latest culottes or golden onesie. In the early autumn, two men arrived into the kingdom. They were chancers, always trying to pull a fast one. Sometimes they pretended to be relatives of the leader, but in the case of Twittersville, they decided to pose as weavers. The men knocked at the huge oaken door and waited for it to creak open. Yes? asked the emperor's footman. We are world famous weavers, the Swindle Brothers. We have come to show your emperor our exquisite fabric to see if he may like to purchase a suit made of the finery. Of course, when he heard, the emperor couldn't resist an interview with the brothers. The men entered his chambers with their portmanteaus. Most Excellency, we have brought with us today for your delectation our finest fabrics and materials. Emperor Colin was delighted. He urged them to open their leather cases and show him the goods. Of course, said the lead brother. However, I should warn you that this fabric is of the utmost delicacy. It is so fine and beautiful that only the most intelligent can see it. Anyone who is dull-witted will be unable to behold it. Indeed, said the other brother. Only the most handsome, well-educated and considerate of men will be able to bear witness to the material. They opened their cases and held up the fabric. Well, the Swindle brothers really did live up to their name. There was nothing in their suitcases and there was nothing that they were holding up. But they did a very good job of miming and the emperor, at first confused, did not want to appear the fool. I say, he said. What fabulous textiles you bring before me today! 
The brothers smiled smugly at one another. It looked like their plan was going to work. It will be my birthday next week. Hmm, make me a suit from that fabric and a cloak from that, said Colin, pointing to thin air. Uh, yes, a sire, said the men, quickly folding up their material and exiting the royal chamber. In the run-up to the Emperor's birthday, whispers went around the kingdom like smoke on bonfire night. The folk knew that two mysterious weavers had been working day and night, locking themselves into the castle tower chambers. The Emperor was to have a magnificent suit and cloak made from the finest material known to man or beast, and only the cleverest would be able to see it. The big day arrived. People lined the streets in their best bib and tucker and waited for the procession. First it was the soldiers, and then the bagpipe players, then the horses pulling golden carriages, and finally the royal household. Emperor Colin had been expertly dressed by the Swindle brothers, who had spent many hours fitting and refitting the garments to make sure they were perfectly aligned to their client's body shape. They had been paid handsomely and had made their goodbyes just moments before the procession started. Meanwhile, back on the streets of Twittersville, people were agog. It seemed to most that Emperor Colin had forgotten to dress at all. He appeared to be wearing nothing. But nobody was willing to speak out because they knew that only the stupidest fools would fail to see the beautiful clothing. Emperor Colin flounced down the streets behind his footmen, horses and nephews showing off his wonderful new outfit. It was so fine that he could feel the slightest of breeze against his skin. He was so proud and delighted at how clever he was to choose such a pair of terrific weavers. The crowd were all thinking the same thing, but no one was willing to speak out for fear of seeming foolish or being carted off to the tower for an indeterminate amount of years. The only person who saw it for what it was was five-year-old Jack, who could see quite clearly that the Emperor was naked. He wore nothing but socks and sandals. Jack had been nestled on his father's shoulders so he could get a good view of the procession as it went by. Dad! Dad! cried Jack in his loudest outdoor voice. Why is Emperor Colin naked? The crowd stopped clapping and cheering. The horses, nephews and footmen froze mid-step and Emperor Colin's head turned towards Jack and his father. Then the Emperor looked down at his body. Suddenly, as things often do in moments of crisis and stress, a truth struck Emperor Colin. He was indeed naked, naked and in front of thousands of people. Time stood still for a moment while he took in the situation. Well, said Emperor Colin, I appear to have been made a fool of. Jack's father leant forward and passed him his own cloak. Thank you, young man, said Emperor Colin. I was beginning to feel the chill. The procession started up again, as did the cheering and clapping, and from a distant hill the Swindle brothers could just about make out the procession, wending its way through Twittersville. I ought to mention that I forgot to colour the gems in the crown when I was filming, so I sneakily did it afterwards and took a still photo. Do forgive me and enjoy! If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. 
there are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Oh, I love painting and drawing. It really is all the sustenance I need. Oh, and tea and custard creams. Next week, I am looking at why you need your own ISBNs. I'm off to Weaver Weevil. I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.